In this video, we'll be looking at reflexes or specifically examples uh, and structure of the reflex arc. So reflexes are very, very important for our survival. It, uh, without reflexes, we probably would have died already. Um, some of the things that makes reflexes so important is because, number one, it is involuntary. Um, our body just naturally does it without us even thinking about it. It doesn't require our brain to process the situation for, for reflex to kick into place. So it prevents overloading of the brain and it would already do it before we uh, think about it. It's innate, it's not learned, so it provides that immediate protection even when we are babies. So we don't have to learn how to protect ourselves uh, through re reflexes, it's something that we're naturally born with. Uh, reflexes are also extremely fast because uh, usually they're only involved one to two synapses only. So it doesn't require it to go from multiple synapses or multiple neurons um, for it to happen. So it it's very, very quick and simply relying on the speed of diffusion of the neurotransmitters between the synapses to have that. And also, it's sometimes some of the reflexes are part of our everyday action, right? So, for example, blinking reflex is already one of it. And we probably do a lot more reflexes than we realize because we just think of them as natural, uh, natural body responses anyways. So reflexes are very, very important and essential for our survival. So now let's have a very quick look on the reflex arc structure. You may have done this already in GCSE, but it's worth having a recap as well. So first of all, we say that there is the receptor, which is the part of the body that receives that stimulus. Uh, then they will send the signal through the sensory neuron, which is this particular part here. Then again, remember it's a sensory uh, neuron because the cell body is in the middle of it. So we've got the dendron and then the cell body and then the axon then finally we get to this part. And then they, at this part, they would release the neurotransmitters uh, to go through the synapse to this uh, bit in, in the uh, spinal cord, which is called the relay neuron. Then finally, we've got the uh, next bit, which is the uh, motor neuron, which actually does the, uh, sends the impulse to the effector to do the reaction. And as we mentioned, the effectors uh, tend to be uh, either a muscle or it could be glands, depending on which it is. But here we're going to be looking at two examples of uh, reflex actions where the effectors are actually muscles. But be aware that there could be multiple different examples as well. So this is the reflex arc. Now, to help with uh, explanations later on for those two examples, I've color coded them. So the blue one would be the sensory neuron, the green one would be the relay neuron, and the red one would be the motor neuron as well. So just keep that in mind. So the first one we'll look at is the knee jerk reaction or the knee jerk reflex. So it's important to know the different structures of uh, the knee first before we start doing this. So here we've got a, a, a more detailed structure of it. So here I have color coded them. We've got the patella tendon, which is a tendon that connects, uh, that is found just underneath the kneecap. And then we've got the extensor muscle, which is kind of near, usually near the front of your thighs. And then the flexor muscle, which is kind of like the hamstring, like kind of behind on the back of our thighs. So you can see that there are loads of neurons connected them. So we've got the uh, sensory neuron, which can actually be branched off into two. One of the branches is connected to a motor neuron directly, which is connected back to the extensor muscle. And then we've got, a. it can also connect to a relay neuron in the spinal cord, which can then be connected to a motor neuron, which is connected to the flexor muscle. So this is what, it, what how it works. Usually we would do the knee jerk reflex or checking of the knee jerk reaction uh, in when you're seeing a GP or doctors. And it is a way that the doctors can use to test for uh, any nervous problems or cerebellar disease because it's all about the coordination of movement. So they're usually the way to do that, they do a little, take a little hammer and they tap just underneath your kneecap. And what they do is that they are tapping that and tapping on your patella tendon. So when they tap on that, it will cause the patella tendon to stretch which also then stretches the extensor muscle because any sort of, it's physically stretching it and then it also physically stretches the extensor muscle. Because the extensor muscle is stretched, it would send, uh, it would trigger an impulse to be sent along the sensory neuron. And then here it branches off and the reflex signal would then, one of them would go along the motor neuron, which is connected back to the extensor muscle, causing it to contract. 
but at the same time the other one goes through a relay neuron which gives it a slightly different um, order. The relay neuron, once it goes through the relay neuron, it will tell this other motor neuron connected to the flexor muscle to relax. So here we've got an example of antagonistic uh, muscle uh, action. So it will tell one of the uh, muscle to contract and the other one to relax. Now because this one's relaxing and the other one's contracting, um, it will pull on the tendon and therefore your leg would just kick upwards. So therefore your leg would just kick up like that. So this is the knee drug reaction. So again, step number one, there's a tiny tap under the kneecap causing the patella uh, tendon to stretch, which also stretches the extensor muscle. This then sends an reflex arc impulse through the sensory neuron and it goes through a branch there as well. Then the, ref uh, the reflex signal goes along one of these motor neurons that is connected to the extensor muscle causing it to contract. And the other branch of the sensory neuron goes through a relay neuron which inhibits uh, the motor neuron there causing the uh, uh, flexor muscle to relax. Because of the antagonistic muscle movement, you've got uh, the action of your leg kicking upwards um, in that sense. So this is the knee jerk reaction. And this is an example of a spinal reflex because we say that the reflex involves the spinal cord here. Now here is another example of uh, a reflex action which is called the blinking reflex. Uh, now, the blinking reflex is obviously involving the eyes, and uh, it's a very nice technique to use that doctors use to examine unconscious patients. Uh, and it's a way of assessing uh, for people who are in a coma, or etc., to see if they're brain dead. Um, because uh, we say that this uh, particular reflex is a cranial reflex, which involves the brain rather than the spinal cord. So usually we say that the relay neuron no longer exists in the spinal cord. This particular relay neuron exists in the lower brainstem. And we say if the lower brainstem is uh, functioning, then this reflex action would still occur. But if you're brain dead, that means the lower brainstem is already no longer alive and dead. Therefore, uh, this re blinking reflex would not actually occur. There are uh, several ways to do this. They can obviously uh, either do it by uh, either use a corneal reflex action, which is um, sort of a touching reflex or so directly touching the cornea, or it could be optical uh, reflex, which is uh, about using things like bright light. So first of all, uh, this is sort of the general structure of the eye. You've got the this is the lens and this is the cornea, which is the front part of your eye, and then you've got your eyelids and as well and what we're going to be looking at is the eyelid muscles there. So usually the first thing that happens is that something is brushed against the cornea. So this is the first step. There's a irritant, right? So the cornea is irritated and there are the sensory neurons are deposited along the cornea. So once the cornea is being irritated, it will send an impulse along the sensory neuron uh, to the brain stem where the relay neuron is. So this is in the brain, lower brainstem, and the reading neuron simply passes the impulse along. And then it goes to the motor neuron, which then branches off into different, different things, and it goes to the different parts of the eye, uh, but basically they connect to the eyelid muscles above and below. And then once the signal gets there, it would trigger the eyelid muscles to contract and basically close your eyes. And we say that both of your eyes would uh, shut uh, together as a consensual response and this is something that the body has been has been programmed to do both eyes would shut at the same time to make sure that the eyes are protected so this is the pre uh, blinking reflex so there you have it that is the uh, all about reflexes just a very quick recap we'll go for everything very very quickly we say reflexes are very very important for survival because it's involuntary it's innate it's not learned and it's also extremely fast to protect us from uh, actually being damaged from uh, or hurt by any danger and the reflex arc generally has this general structure we've got the receptors which detects a stimulus, stimulus or stimuli sends the impulse along the sensory neuron and it goes to the relay neuron either found in the spinal cord or in the brain and then it will relay the signal to the motor neuron to the effectors where it actually triggers a particular response to to save us from that danger 
and there are two specific examples that you need to know. The first one that you need to know is the knee jerk re reflex, which is an example of a spinal reflex because the reading neuron is found in the spinal cord. So it's relying on a small tap under the kneecap, which stretches the patella tendon and also the extensor muscle, which triggers the impulse to be sent along the sensory neuron. One of the impulse would cause the extensor muscle to contract, and the other one through the reading neuron would cause the uh, flexor muscle to relax. And because of this antagonistic muscle action, the leg would just, uh, the leg would just kick up like that. And that is a very good way to check for any nervous problems or cerebellar disease. Another example that you need to know is the blinking reflex, which is an example of a cranial reflex because it involves the brain. Uh, and in this case, the cornea is irritated, usually by touch, for example, and it would trigger an impulse to be sent along the sensory neuron, and it goes to the uh, relay neuron, which is in the lower brainstem. And then it will pass the signal to uh, the motor neurons, which connect to the eyelid muscles, causing your eyes to, uh, your eyes to shut. And this is a very good uh, technique that doctors use to examine and assess, uh, ass, uh, assess if a patient uh, is brain dead or not. If the brainstem is still functioning, this blinking reflex will occur. But if it's not, then uh, if it doesn't occur, that means that patient is usually declared uh, dead. So this is what you need to know about reflexes.